everyone it's your girl brain shanae and i'm coming at you with a vlog and this will be the first vlog from me from for 2023 and i am currently reading monarch rising this is by harper glenn and i'm really enjoying it so far and if you don't know i am also part of hero voices book tour for this particular book and i'm so excited to participate with this book tour because the book is phenomenal so far and like i said i'm enjoying it um, but I just wanted to, I felt like this would be the good time to start a vlog. I just got off of work, um, did some training, talked to my bestie, Bree from Bree Free Reads on the phone. So yeah, it's a, it's a good day. Um, yesterday was a rough day, but I'm trying to have, you know, be more positive, have positive energy, try to be like yesterday was yesterday and yesterday is the past. It has nothing to do with the present and I'm going to make sure it doesn't affect me in the future. So with that being said, I'm trying to have, like I said, some good energy and my kids are in the back and everybody is in the back as we go to where we need to go. Um, and as she, I'll probably be waiting outside in the car with my boys and as she's in, in there getting, you know, doing her lessons and stuff like that, I just, I'm just going to be reading Monarch Rising. So why not? So um, I'll hopefully y'all stay tuned and I'll catch on a little bit. But um, yeah, so <laughs> I just dropped off Kiana I'm outside for a second because I got my my oldest son playing on his tablet and I got my youngest. He's just being loud. So that's why I'm out here for a second. Um, but I am only maybe six chapters in of Monarch Rising and I'm really enjoying it. Um, we're having the main character named Joe, short for Josephine. Her last name is Monarch. And this is more like dystopian, futuristic type of book. And I'm enjoying it. It mentions um, like the place where Joe lives is called the Ash, where it's pretty much they're they're struggling. They're living in poverty. They're all they're scavenging for food, shelter, clothes, and etc. And she mentions how they had a revolt in the year of 2030, where people had enough of where it was always either the poor or the rich. And so at one point the people came up with this revolt and they had captured all of their, um, all the people, you know, like the, all the people, the elected people, you know, the government, everything like that, the Senate and everything and captured them, put them in cages and stuff like that because they had enough. But apparently it seems like that revolt didn't really work in their favor. Hence there is still poverty and stuff. But she mentions New Georgia where it seems like it's a place of luxury and she um, expresses the, um, how it's the gala and the reps and how she passed her exam. So now she has to a rep has to um, like her in order for them to take her on in the lineup, you know, you know, like her in the lineup and move her where she can be in New Georgia and live in luxury. 
So like I said, this is like a futuristic, uh, futuristic future. So it's dystopian where it's, it says New Georgia or it says uh, the, U the new United States of America. So we're dealing with that. And some of the aspects, it reminds me of the Hunger Games um, because you know how they had to, um, usually when they were in the games, they, were, they had to have sponsors or people to like them um, because the more sponsorships that they got, the higher there it was for them to survive during the games. So this is what it pretty much is in a sense where except for the reps have to choose you in the lineup and if you get chosen, they will take you into New Georgia and you can live in luxury and you no longer have to live in what they call the ash. Um, but so far, like I said, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it so far. It's really, there is no dull moment. There's always some type of information. There's always something happening. Uh, more information about the Ash, more information about Joe, what she needs to do in order to be picked in the lineup in order to go to this gala. Um, and, and because all she thinks about is living in luxury, she hates scavenging for food and stuff like that. And later on, uh, when I get home, I do want to share with you a passage where it goes more in depth about the revolt 2030, which was the year 2030. And some of this makes me feel like this, like I always talk to this, talk to a lot of my subscribers, my members, my friends, and um, the reading sprints that I, I always have every week. And how, like, I feel like there's going to be some type of war on, on U.S. soil. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I have a feeling in my bones it's going to happen. Because a lot of people can't take it anymore. They can't take it where they're living in poverty. Or their rights. And their civil rights are being taken away from them. So, it's just, like, <laughs> like I said, I'm loving this book. I have no complaints about it whatsoever so far. Um, but I'll keep you all updated later. I'm going to be reading it some more. Um, and I'll probably give you more updates when I get home, but I'll catch y'all later. All right, y'all. So I finally made it home. Um, kids are in bed. Um, I'm like I said, I'm still currently reading uh, Monarch Rising. And I wanted to pretty much share with you what I was pretty much talking about as far as the revolt 2030. Um, I was getting more perspective of what really happened. Um, so it gives you a passage like it says, um, I can almost see them, the poor folks back then who called themselves revolt rebels or RRs, how RRs raided government buildings in huge numbers across all 51 states, how they ambushed, how they ambushed elected officials as they slept, held them in cages barely big enough to hold their bodies, acts committed to take back the country they loved, freedoms they'd been denied, and meager voices silenced by violence. Um, so it talks about, uh, like I said, the revolt that happened in the year of 2030. Um, and then I started to get a better understanding of the revolt and how, how uh, I, I said backfired. So the thing was, it didn't backfire. What they did was the poor became the rich and the rich became the poor. That's what happened in the revolt 2030. And so, um, the ash is poverty. So when we're, uh, we have John, who's one of the characters in the book is talking to Joe. Um, and he says, two lives exist in new America, one of poverty, one of riches, one only need glance to see which we're in poor place, land of forgotten people, high crime, kids get shot pulling gum out pockets. No one's shocked when John says this, usually right after those words leave his instigating thin lips the crowds full of plain faces because they know unwarranted murder is just life. Cops shoot to kill without hesitation. And why shouldn't they? They're never punished. The law is where the bullet in their barrel hits. In the ashes, protesting is illegal. So we suck it up and take it. No voice can change it. And that's where they are currently in. So like I said, during that revolt, the poor became the rich and the rich became the poor and the ash is the location of poverty and so in order to get out of poverty they have these exams they have to, have, they have to take joe is 17 years old and once they pass those exams there's a certain um, percentage that you have to get in order to pass i think it's 80 and up um and then after that you join you are in a lineup um at a gala and that's when reps pretty much they choose which person they want for and then so on I'm not so deep in the book just yet I'm just now getting into the perspective of another um character in the book um where he is um in New Georgia so he is considered the uh 
he is rich he's living in luxury but he t he may be living in luxury but he his he's being abused by his stepmother um so that's where we are right that's where i left off that's on chapter three called the cove um i thought it was like farther along but apparently not it just seems so good I, I just didn't even keep track of what chapter I was in that's terrible um but yeah that's where I am at right now where we're getting his perspective on how he lives um and how his stepmother is pretty much telling him like once they hit the lineup and they choose their person um he's pretty much supposed to wreck their life or something like that I'm like I said I'm not fully deep into the story um but that's where I got so far and he's she's pretty much teaching him her stepson how to never fall in love because love is this love is that um you know it's just not good to have um and she's only saying that because she's bitter because she had lost um her husband who you know and he she takes it out on her stepson because her stepson looks like her husband um so she's taking all her frustration out on him because he looks like his dad um so that's where i am right now um and then I'm probably gonna read a little bit more than go to bed but I just wanted to give you a little update and give you these little passages that I had read um so far that I found very interesting and how I brought up how um like it seems like how we are in present day of 23 2023 it seems like there a war will happen but how like how they did with how the how they did it was how the rich became the poor i don't think well that won't ever happen but i think is what we want now in today's society is just e equality with everything wages with everything it's not just based off of rich and then you have the middle class and, and you know just like everyone have equal status every you know but that's you know that's the u.s <laughs> it's all about capitalism it's all about money um so yeah but i find this book really interesting and intriguing like i said i'm really enjoying it so far i'm loving the writing and the style of it all um just getting to know the characters in the in this book but i'm about to probably get ready for bed and i will talk to y'all tomorrow see ya good morning everyone today is march the first yeah i said it. it's march the first already i hate that february is a short month but it is what it is <laughs> so right now I'm heading um, to take my um, kids to school and then I got to drop off my youngest to daycare and then go from there um, like I haven't read I read a little bit more of Monarch Rising last night um, so we're getting I, mean, I forgot to mention this yesterday um, but we're getting two different point of views we're getting Joe and then we're also getting Cove and Cove is um, he lives in New Georgia, New Georgia, and he has one goal and one mission, uh, based off of what his stepmother wants him to do. And that is pretty much to break, um, the person that they choose in the lineup at the gala. And by break, that means crushing their dreams about, you know, fairy tales of living in luxury, um, and just breaking their hearts. And so his stepmother, Eleanor is telling Cove like make sure you don't kiss her or whatever or kiss them whoever it may be um and don't fall in love and just definitely for sure do not kiss them because once you kiss them that's when you start having emotions and yada 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 so that's where I left off um I'm gonna uh, read a little bit more um before I um after I drop the kids off and before I head to work uh but I just want to give y'all a little update um I hope everybody's day is going to be fantastic i know in some places you know their people's days has already begun um but yeah i just hope this day for everyone is is positive um and i'll catch y'all later i think brie from brie sure reads is having reading sprints tonight so i definitely will be i'll probably be reading monarch rising um during those sprints um and then go from there but i will catch y'all later um y'all probably see an update from me after work so see you later Hey y'all, I'm finally off work and I get to enjoy this weather. It's literally 73, 73 degrees today. And when I was at work, they still had the heat on. So I've been sweating all day. 
uh, it was just stifling in there but I'm glad I'm able to enjoy this weather while I can um, I'm on my way to pick up my kids from school and then get my son from daycare and then heading home and then I convinced my husband to get some Costco's pizza if you haven't had Costco's pizza definitely check it out it's fire it is good it's worth it so um while I wait for my kids to uh, get out from school, I'm probably going to read some more of Monarch Rising. Um, man, the, uh, the one of the characters, which is uh, the rep or whatever, Eleanor, which is Cove's stepmother, she pissed me off when she touched uh, Joe's hair. She's like, I never touched these braids like this before and it feels different you know I'm like girl get your hands out of her hair I was just like whoa I had I had a moment so <laughs> that's where I stopped at um to the point where um Joe and some of her friends were in the lineup um and the reps were choosing which ones they wanted to go to the gala and that's when they would make their final decision on who they would choose in, in order for them to you know live in luxury and get out of poverty and stuff like that so that's where I'm at um, I will keep y'all updated later um, I'm about to put these windows down because it is hot so I'll catch y'all in a little bit picked up my kids you can see them in the back playing with my um, son's tablet they were so excited to um <laughs> to see me and so they're like and I asked them I was like do you want pizza they're like yeah so we're gonna have pizza tonight because um you know we who doesn't love pizza um so yeah I'm on my way to get my youngest and then I'm gonna head home uh pick up my husband and then go to Costco and we don't always go to Costco. Costco is like 25, 25 minute drive, depending on traffic. So we don't always go to Costco, but when we're in the mood for Costco pizza, we gonna make that trip. So um, yeah, I read a little bit more of Monarch Rising. There's, um, I'm at the point where they're now protesting um, and a black girl got killed just for getting, just for, uh, for stealing bread so she could um, feed her son. Um, so the Ash is now protesting, um, and I guess Boa is one of the leaders, which Boa, I don't know if I've mentioned this, Boa is Joe's best friend. Um, so yeah, and then we also have Cove, who I think is, so, is starting to like Joe a little bit because she really didn't care much for him. She wasn't paying him much attention even though he was trying his best to get to know her. And I think that since she rejected him so much, I think that's why he started to like her. Um, and she even heard like heard him talking to one of his friends saying, yeah, these uh, the people from the ash are nothing. They just want to live in a fairy tale. They'll do anything to get out of poverty. You know, they'll dance, they'll do whatever it takes. And Joe overheard him talk, saying that to his uh, one of his friends, and she pretty much corrected him. And <laughs> and after that, she really does not want to have anything to do with Cove. And I think with when she confronted him about what he had said um, and put him in his place, I think that also attracted him to, uh, attracted him to her. I think because he never got confronted like that. Um, so that's where I am right now. It's fast paced. It's um, I'm like I said, I'm it's good. I'm enjoying it. Um, you still we're still trying to get into the gala situation, but like I said before that, the whole we have uh, protesting currently happening. So that is where I am right now. Um, like I said, on the way to, on my way to get my youngest, then going home to pick up my my um, husband. Then we're gonna get pizza. Um, I'm probably going to eat a little bit, you know, of course it's dinner, something to eat, and then I'll give y'all updates a little later, um, while I do reading sprints, um, uh, Joy and Bree's reading sprints for tonight. Um, so that'll probably be the next time you see me. Um, but I hope everybody's day is going good, and I will catch y'all in a couple hours. See ya. Hey, Daddy, 
One. So as you can see, we're in Costco. Um, Keanu just placed an order. So right now we're just waiting in line or waiting for when they call our number. But yeah, we're just chilling. We finally made it. It wasn't as bad as traffic as I thought it would be, especially during rush hour. So not bad at all. So I'll take it. But oh, did you give me ice cream? Wow, that's really messed up. <laughs> No, it's okay. You can have it, Blue. No, it's okay. It's okay, Tana. But um, yeah. Just give me a little update. Once we get our pizza, we're gonna head home, eat, and then there'll be more updates to come. But I just wanna get, fill y'all fill y'all in on where I am right now. <laughs> and my husband is being mean to me. <laughs> He's laughing at me. Say hi. But yeah, this is my little update for now. Um, I did read a little bit more of Monarch Rising. There's not really much has happened, so we shall see. Um, I got to part two, so we shall see what happens next. Um, pretty much with the part where I left off was a lot of police brutality um, and a lot of loss um, and stuff. And so I will fill it all in later and I'll catch you in a minute. All right, y'all, so just a quick update. Um, finally got home from Costco. We had our pizza. Everyone's had their baths. I took my shower. So now we're getting ready to um, join Bree from Bree Shree Reads on her reading sprints tonight. So I plan on getting a little farther in Monarch Rising just to see what happens next. I know the last part I ended was very traumatic um especially with joe and then what happened with boa um with the police brutality the fire um uh, lives were lost so and you know the threatening of of killing her um her aunt's boyfriend um so yeah so that's where i left off um i'm about to hop on Bree Sprints and then from there I should pro progress into the book and get more into it so yeah yeah <laughs> I'm gonna listen to a book so I asked the people Pat said Pat and Aaron said uh the water dancer mm -hmm. um I got a soul of the deep that I can listen to Tristan Strong and who fears death I'm, I'm biased. I'm biased. Of course, I'll say like sold the deep, <laughs> but that's because I liked no. it. That's because I liked it. That's the only reason why I would choose it. I'm thinking that too, but I don't know. Water dancer. I feel like I need to because it's such a a deep book. I need to put my eyes on it. Yeah. Well, so far, I am enjoying it. I'm halfway through it. It's um, it's like a futuristic uh, type of book where um, it's called, like, the United States is called the New United States, and they have New Georgia, um, mm. literally where there's, there's people in poverty, and then there's rich people. Um, it's a place where uh protesting is illegal um police brutality is in here as well um yeah it's it's interesting that just came out this no it's almost out right uh it came out last year oh last year mm -hmm. and oh. it's good it's just it sort of reminds Sounds me of great. hunger games too because i was in yeah. yeah they there's certain girls or whatever or kids or whatever if they pass exams they um 
they have possibility of getting chosen by these reps from like New Georgia um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> in order for them to be um, to not live in poverty and to you know live in luxury. Uh, so the, where they live, it's called the ash, where it's you're literally scavenging for food on a regular basis. Um, the main character's parents killed themselves after having her because they knew they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to feed her and feed themselves. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh so. goodness. <laughs> That's a heavy book. Yeah, it, it's heavy, but it's good. It's just, man, it just reminds me of so much of today, in a sense, and about poverty and how people's rights are being taken away. So it's good. I just, hopefully there's some type of happy ending, but we shall see. Yeah. <laughs> some type of big ass rebellion, right? Well, that's something. something they did have one it was a called revolt 2030 and that's when they uh arrested all the elected officials and everything and put them in cages and stuff and had them go into poverty or something like that i don't know i'm still in the middle of it mm. so it's interesting Yikes. yeah so right now i'm at this point where Cove is finally finally realizing that he might actually like Joe um and to become become vulnerable with her. Uh the reason why he sort of agreed with his stepmother Eleanor with her little love game which um it's mentioned on page 37 where she says um this eve this evening this col uh, the colossal ballroom will be full of bambi eyed teens from the ashes chasing fairy tale delusional ideologies of riches connection and love unbeknownst to other new georgia reps eleanor uses the gala to play her love games even the years she isn't the rep at the lineup she selects teen victims from the hopefuls at the gala hand picking the vulnerable hearts margo and i will manipulate and break to break is simple pick girl Woo girl, make girl fall in love, break girl's heart, leave girl in tears. Um, and it says breaking girls isn't exclusive to the lineup or the gala. But this year, Eleanor wants a heart from the ashes. Um, <clears throat> so with that whole, with this whole game that his stepmother wants him to do, he doesn't want to play this game anymore. And I think the reason why is, is he looks at like... He didn't he didn't really want to fall in love either because he looked at what his father and his stepmother, you know, he how his father still loved Eleanor, even though Eleanor treated his father like like trash and how love just makes you stupid. And he's starting to realize, like, that's not really the case. And I think he's really starting to appreciate Joe. And I'm starting to get to know more about Cove and. Um, his family trauma and the abuse that he's deal what he's dealing with with his stepmother um and you know with especially when he does something that Eleanor doesn't like she gives him gives him uh, slashes or lashes or whatever like that as punishment um it's just I'm starting to feel for Cove um I I think he's starting to realize what he's been doing and what he was doing you know um and how he was acting towards joe was wrong um it's just now how does he express his feelings for joe because joe is starting to have have these type of connections with cove as well um but she also is still dealing with the loss of of her best friend and she almost dying um from the smoke and um from the protests and the ashes and i don't know it's <sighs> Like I was just not Team Cove at all, but now I start. I feel sorry for him. Like you may live in riches and not be in poverty, but that doesn't that does not mean that you're happy. You know, uh, money and stuff does not buy you happiness. Um, and, I don't know, 
but yeah that's where I am right now so like at first I was not team cove I still I'm, I'm not team cove still but I'm starting to have some sympathy and empathy for him um with that um even though he grew up snobby and whatnot uh just from knowing more about his background how he grew up and you know how when his father died what had happened and how his stepmother is not giving him the deed to the house because his dad told her that the house belonged to Cove. Um, so yeah, he's she's hanging the deed over his head, making him do what she tells him to. Um, which she's seen, she's an evil woman. Like who does that? Like who does that to a teenager? This is just e pure evil for real. But that is where I am right now. I'm probably going to read. Um, sprints is still going on. I have uh, 47 minutes left before this um, this sprint. And then I'll probably head, uh, head to bed. I won't be finishing the book tonight. But I have a feeling I'll be finishing the book tomorrow. Um, but I definitely want to get. I'm on chapter 23. Um, I want to end the night on a good note. Um, so probably chapter 26 is when I will. Uh, call it a night and then I'll have about a hundred and like 30 pages or so left of the book and then I probably will conclude um, my vlog hopefully tomorrow um, and go from there but I as of right now I'm giving this book a four out of five stars um, I have no complaints about this book it's fast paced I'm feeling I feel like I'm getting to know these characters even more I feel like as I'm reading this I'm like I'm in the room with them as they're experiencing all these different things Joe's experiencing this Cove has experienced this and I'm like in the room with them and just observing them like <laughs> like um sorry I still have a call like <clears throat> oh sorry like I'm a, like a wallflower, just being on the wall and observing them. So that's where I am. That's my little update. If I don't give y'all an update later on tonight, you'll definitely give, get one in the morning when I wake up. Um, but I hope everybody's day has been good so far. Like I said, if you don't get an update, I will catch y'all tomorrow. So have a good night, everyone. See ya. I'm sorry, y'all, but as I'm reading this, I got so pissed i got so upset especially like <clears throat> i'm sorry i told y'all wasn't gonna give y'all updates till tomorrow well <laughs> i lied so like literally when she is talking to uh when joe is talking to eleanor and she brings up more i guess he's like a writer or whatever she says um more wrote what else is to be concluded from this but that you first make thieves and then punish them and then uh, Eleanor says to Joe, you see, just Joe, Boa's death is a product of his upbringing. An unfortunate series of events, yes, but these things were bound to happen. By no means saying it's just, simply saying it couldn't be avoided. <sighs> wow. And then, and then she says, I, I unpack Eleanor's words. If she feels the way we're treated and excluded in the ashes is unjust, why won't she do something about it? If hopefuls bring fame and more wealth to New Georgia, why can't NG transfer wealth to the ashes? And then Eleanor continues, it's tough in the ashes, sure, ashes, sure, but it's better than it was for my ancestors. And then it says, better doesn't equate to good. And I was like, yes, you better educate her, Joe, because I, I want to come into this book and educate her myself. Like, how dare you say that? How dare you justify his death? Uh, how dare you say that it's, it's maybe tough in the ashes, but it's better than what it was for your ancestors? It's still bad. People are living in poverty. Like, Joe's parents committed suicide because they knew... That if they lived, th there wasn't going to be any food for them or for Joe. So they killed themselves and had, and Joe was raised by her aunt. And then you have these people that are called jigs um, in this book who are, I guess that's a word for like crackheads and they'll eat any, anything at all. Um, they'll even eat any type of meat that has radius in it, which is some type of poison that'll kill you instantly. So it, 
so it doesn't matter if she says it's at like it's any better it's not it's not better poverty is not good at all whatsoever so yeah Eleanor just pissed me off y'all Eleanor pissed me off Ugh, this is getting me all in my emotions but I'm happy that this book is doing that I like books that gives me having me all up in my feelings because it makes you think it, it makes you have different perspectives on things it makes you have different perspective of of where how we're living now like I live in the U.S. and there's poverty I see there I see a lot of homeless people on the street and it's sad it's really sad and they say that the U.S. is the most richest country or whatever well it doesn't show it it do does it I don't I don't see any proof to that whatsoever there should not be not one homeless person on the street if that was the case um I just ugh, that just irked me so much okay sorry y'all I just I had to give y'all a little update because I'm, I'm still reading it and that it 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 hit the soul it hit my soul deep and I just got so emotionally upset because like yes this is a book but this is stuff this stuff is is happening in reality and it pisses me off because we have a government that just wants to keep just keep pinching pennies wants to make sure they're good making sure they have wealth making sure their family has wealth but they could care less about other people they could care less about homeless people they could care less less about anybody but themselves so yeah all right i'm done ranting I'm sorry. I just got passionate about it because this is just so, just so effed up. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'll give, <laughs> I'm, on this note, I think it's best that I just wrap it up and then go to bed because <laughs> it definitely got me all emotional. But yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up tonight. I'm about to head to bed right now because it, yeah, Eleanor just definitely ticked me off. Um, but have a good night, everyone. I will catch y'all later with more updates. Night. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today is March the 2nd. Um, I hope everyone is having a great morning today. Um, I had a slow morning. I wanted to sleep in a little bit. And then with me having a slow morning, my kids had a slow morning. So we're a little bit behind today, but we'll be all right. We're not that behind, but I like to, um, you know, be more punctual. If that, yeah, that's a good word to say, more punctual. Um, just to get there a little early because if I don't, the line and stuff is ridiculous um, when I drop off my kids. So, yeah, that's why I try to get there a little bit earlier than usual to get there before the other parents do. Um, but I left off reading Monarch Rising upset um, but um, because of Eleanor. But I was more hopeful when it came to Cove and Joe. Um, especially when like where I left off they you know they almost kissed each other and stuff like that so I I see the changes between both of them and if you didn't know Joe is a reader she loves to read she wasn't she didn't have access to a lot of books um, you know since she lived in the ash um, but she had some favorites and even Cove took an interest in reading some of her favorite books so yes we have a a bookworm in this book which that's amazing um but that also lets you know like in the real world of being in poverty and how access to books i mean it's not accessible and how when they're taking away books out of libraries and out of schools and out of the, out of other places they're they're taking away everyone's access and i just find that heartbreaking and it's just it's sad how like in the year of 2023 we're going through all this where kids and stuff don't have access to don't have access to books um I was even talking to my boss about it and how we're um doing a book fair and stuff for kids that don't have access uh to books um where um a couple of districts come to our store and they get um, a certain amount of books um, because they don't have access to them they don't have there's no way for them to even get to a library because their parents don't have a car you know you know they don't have any type of way of getting there um, you know all their money goes to bills and stuff so 
you know like I, I like that we're doing that for these kids and that there's a program for them um, so that they have some money in order to get them some books um, and I found that absolutely amazing that uh, we're doing that um, but yeah I'll be um, reading Monarch Rising prior to me going to work and then um, you probably won't get an update from me until after I get off of work and then I know my daughter has um, a gym she has gymnastics today so um, I probably be and the boys will be with me while she's in gymnastics because the room for me to watch her is it's compact with a whole bunch of kids and parents upstairs and I'm not trying to be around everybody so so we probably just probably just sit in the car while she does her thing they have a little digital thing uh where I can access it on my phone and watch her um so I'll probably be doing that and reading Monarch Rising but yep that's my little update that's my little input of how I was like reflecting on everything of what I read last night and how it meant to, like it got to me emotionally um and so yeah so I will give y'all updates later on once um I get off work see ya hello everyone I made it <laughs> I made it through another work day today was a little hectic with, with scheduling and managing people and where they need to go and when they need to go it was just yeah it was a little bit of a hot mess but I was able to survive it um so yeah I'm completely off of work and I'm I feel great and then I'm off tomorrow too so it'll be a great day to just read and relax um but yeah probably I'm on my way to get my kids from school now and then later on my daughter has um gymnastics but um just basing it off of how much I have left and um when it comes to Monarch Rising, I have maybe 50 pages left, so I think I'll be completely done with Monarch Rising before I even take her to gymnastics. Um, and I'm really enjoying this, and I'm enjoying how Cove is starting to step up to his stepmother in a sense. Like he's like she can tell he's drifting away from the plan on breaking Joe and he's like reading and stuff like that and he's like what's up she's like why are you reading this like what what was you know what the original plan was to break her what what's going on so she's not liking how cove is not following what uh she wants him to do um he's starting to have a mind of his own he's starting to think for himself um so like i said it's really good read it's fast paced um i'm really curious of like how the ending is gonna go like with this world this future futuristic uh the new united states of america like is there are they gonna everybody lives equally or is it gonna always be where people live in the ash and then people live in um in luxury and be rich um that's what i really am curious about i'm li i'm liking that there is some type of i maybe not romance but some type of love interest um between the two main characters so like i said i'm enjoying it and um i should be finishing this book really soon and i'm gonna after i finish it i'm gonna probably gather all my thoughts as a whole and finish up this vlog so i hope everyone's day is going great and i'll give you all my updates once um pretty much once i'm done reading it so alright y'all so I'm home um, and I finished the book and I wanted to sort of 
pon like not ponder but to just reflect everything that I had read in these past couple of days regarding Monarch Rising by Harper Glenn. Um, and at first, like I said, I was giving it a four out of five stars, but after finishing it, and like I said, reflecting on everything, everything I read, I, ha I, I personally have to give it a five out of five stars. Um, when I think, when we think about Cove and how he grew up dealing with his stepmother that abused him, was flogging him, uh, on a regular basis if he didn't do anything she she wanted him to do or you know disobey her um and yes they may have lived in luxury you know they lived in new georgia but he was still a suffering and being abused um by his stepmother and so was his stepsister also being abused by her her biological mother as well uh to the point where she felt she didn't want to exist anymore so there's a lot of constant warnings in this book that you have to be mindful of of um self-harm um of um uh suicide um hangings um police brutality you deal with a lot of that um i will i like that there's also queer rep in this book i will say that there's a, a queer rep in here which i do love and i love that representation um it's when I was reflecting on everything that I read and how like the ending wasn't what I, how I wanted it. Um, I thought about how this book was structured and how life, sometimes you don't have that happily ever after. You don't have that happy ending. Um, it might not be what you wanted, but it was some an ending that you needed. Um, and how this ended, I appreciated it. At first, I'm thinking like, oh, Joe and uh, Joe and Cove, oh, they're going to end up together and live happily ever after. No, that was not the case, especially if you read this book. Other things step into play when it comes to Cove and the p person that he's in a relationship with that he doesn't even, he doesn't even love. It was just some type of pretty much like a contract, an agreement when they were born on, you know, who they were to marry. So right then and there, you know, they may not, you know, Joe and Cove didn't end up together, even though Cove loved Joe. Um, and he was just having a hard time uh, being vulnerable to Joe. Joe was just saying, hey, I'm not here to judge you. I'm going to love you for who you are. I'm not going to judge you from your past or whatever. And I think Cove was not ready to take that leap of faith and rightfully so he was still going through a lot of things and joe had to realize like yes she wanted to live in luxury but at the same time when she literally when she goes back to live in the ash and realize her best friend is alive and well that's all she needed was her family and loved ones to be around her um and they were making changes in the ash in itself in order to not make it so rep for them to be repressed any longer and like even at the end of the book which like i i loved i loved how it ended it's um and this is from joe's perspective so it says we lift our chins to the red sun, allow its rays to warm our frozen cheeks and noses. I close my eyes and sigh. This feels right. It's strange, but for the first time in my life, I don't need great expectations and little women, which is one of her favorite books to read. Uh, hence, like I told you, Joe's a bookworm. Um, so it says, though they're beautiful tales, I prefer my story. It was hard leaving new, new, um, excuse me, it was hard leaving New Georgia behind, but in doing so, I realized that everything I thought I wanted, I already had. Wealth lives in the heart of my people and our fight for, for survival. Unity exists in the stories of my childhood. Vi, Rashad, Neil, Boa, Jessup, Tessa, Kyra, Hothead Frank, Cove, Eleanor, even Reed all had parts to play. They're forever unfinished chapters in my book, pages that shape, strengthen, and help me grow. And love, well, it's always been the brown palm holding my hand right now. Joe, Boa says, yeah. I hear him smiling, feel feel him staring at my profile with eyes closed. I imagine sketching his, eye, his brown eyes. It's imperfectly perfect. I like you. 
I flip my lips, lids open, take warm sun into my eyes and smile. And it makes you, it made, Joe went through a lot, but I think she had, through all those times of trying to be, you know, uh, being chosen by the reps and um, in the gala and to live in luxury, luxury and to finally like actually fall in love with somebody and kiss somebody and and realize that she had everything she needed um in the first place and i think with cove he was just now getting to find himself as well and like harper like harper glenn they killed it this book is absolutely phenomenal this book is out today so you, you know it's out so you can definitely pick up your copy right now you don't want to miss out on this this is brilliant brilliant work it makes you think about the world we live in today it makes you think about how you grew up as a child and what your background was um because it even talks more about um Eleanor's background as well in this book and how she was the way she was um with uh with her with uh Cove and um Margot her daughter um even though that's no excuse but now you you get a better picture of Eleanor um, and how she grew up, how her parents were pitting pitting her against siblings and whatnot. And and to be honest, that's a realistic thing that does happen in reality um, where parents have siblings and make them rivals. That is a real thing. And today, you know, today um, and I just. I fell in love with this book. I, it made me like, had some, like I had some tears a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Because it made me think about my childhood and stuff like that and the things I had seen um, and how I want to be better. And I, I don't want to repeat that cycle. I don't want to be like Eleanor, you know, where she was, she's pretty much repeating the cycle of everything that she went through as a child with her parents and so on and her siblings. I'm not doing that. I'm not repeating the cycle. I cannot. I'm breaking cycles for my family. Even my husband, he's breaking cycles as well. And um, I, I just enjoyed this book. And like, even there is an author's note, which I will read as well aloud. And it says, while Monarch Rising is a work of fiction, non-fictional elements of my childhood are weaved into the backbone of its, of its story. Many of the fictional details in Joe's and Cove's character arcs are true. Their personalities, backgrounds, and experiences are, are fragments of my own. I grew up in the projects in East Georgia with a single mom. She worked while putting herself through college. Years later, she met my stepfather, a kind but stern ex-military man battling drug and alcohol addictions. And as a young adult, I discovered my uh, biological father was ex-military and suffered from depression, poverty, PTSD, and schizophrenia. Though tough to experience, these stories shaped my life, speech, writing, this book. I wouldn't be me without hard stories. Writer James Baldwin once said, anyone who has ever struggled with poverty knows how extremely expensive it is to be poor. In writing this manuscript, I wanted to recreate the poor human struggle to shine a light on underrepresented, uh, unrepresented youth living in forgotten places neighborhoods diversified with cool kids laughing running living struggling hoping for change thanks for reading thanks for inviting these pages into your mind heart and world meta harper and like i said this this book is a five out of five stars for me if you haven't picked it up i suggest you do so and definitely check it out for yourself but i think that is a wrap for this blog or this vlog that I did. <laughs> if you enjoyed this vlog, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching everyone. And like I said, do not sleep on this book. Go ahead and pick up your copy today because this is definitely a book that you do not want to miss. Um, but I hope everyone has a great day and everyone stays healthy and stay safe. See ya.